Hey guys, I am super excited to share my latest thrifted furniture makeover with you. I tried a new to me paint that I've heard a lot of raving reviews about. I built a new wood base and I even dressed up the drawers too. So let's dive in. This is what the chest of drawers looked like after we picked it up from our local thrift store. It was $25, which is a steal in my area. It was missing its base and it was pretty beat up, but I loved the simplicity of it and I was excited that it was a blank canvas to play around with. Before I could really get started on this project, I had to undo what I did for another video I made. In that video, I taped off the top so I could compare different stain blocking primers, basically to show why I prime before painting. I'll link that video in the description for you. Anyway, I stripped the paint and the primer off so I had a clean slate for this project while I worked on the rest of the dresser. The dresser had a lot of spiders and webs inside of it, so my husband vacuumed it out for me. What a good husband, right? And then I replaced the missing drawer stoppers with new ones that I bought on eBay a long time ago. And I feel like I do this in about every single makeover, but I filled in the old hardware holes with my very favorite filler for filling hardware holes. I'll share all about that in my next video, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Then things got really fun. We went to Home Depot and bought a bunch of half inch and 5 8 inch square dowels. While we were there, we made sure that they were all straight with no warping or twisting in the wood. When we got home, I measured the drawers and somehow luckily managed to realize that I needed to take an account for the new hardware before I could cut the wood. So I put the new hardware on and then I measured again. And then I cut the wood dowels with my miter saw. I clamped some wood down onto the saw to make sure I cut them all the same length and I cut them in groups of three. I used a total of 12 three foot long dowels for the three drawers. And then I laid them out on the drawers to make sure I cut enough and that they were all cut the right size. And then before I attached them to the drawers, I removed the stickers and sanded each piece so they didn't have any splinters on them. Then I started in the center of the drawer, attaching them with a pin nailer and some Gorilla Glue. I went for a one inch gap between each dowel and alternated between the half inch and the five eighths inch dowels. The most frustrating part of the whole process for me was that the pin nailer kept getting jammed. So I had to keep stopping and fixing it. But I didn't want to use my regular nail gun for fear that it would split the dowels. And I needed something to keep the dowels in place while the glue dried because they kept moving around with a space in between each of them. The whole process of measuring, cutting, sanding, and attaching took about three hours for the three drawers. And I enjoyed every part of it. 
except the sanding and the pin nailer jamming. At the very end, I gave up on using the pin nailer and I just clamped the last few pieces on. And then I let it dry overnight. The next day, I sanded the top and the sides of the dresser. I realized that I needed to sand the filled in holes, so I sanded those down with some 150 grit sandpaper. And then I put some wood filler all over the pinholes, then waited for the wood filler to dry. And then I sanded that wood filler down with 220 grit sandpaper. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, I also sanded the top of all of the dowels to make sure that they were all level with the drawer and to make them all a little bit more smooth. Finally, I was able to clean up all of the dust though and move on to the next step. And that next step was to prime the dresser for paint. I used clear shellac in a spray can. If you've watched any of my previous videos, I bet you've seen this stuff. It's my favorite thing to use to prevent bleed through. And if you're not sure what bleed through is, I have another video and blog post that explains all about it. And I found that it makes paint stick to even really, really slick surfaces too. I know, it is so weird. I get so many comments about shellac and if it really makes paint stick. And yes. Paints of all kind really do stick very, very well to it. It still blows my mind. Anyway, I sprayed two coats of clear shellac on the dresser and then I let it dry overnight. So for this dresser, I used Melange's single step paint called One. I'll talk a little bit more about it later in the video. Anyways. I chose to spray it this time, so I poured it into my Wagner Flexio 3000 paint sprayer. This paint sprayer is an entry-level paint sprayer that I've seen a lot of other painters using, so I tried it out a few months ago. I liked the detail finish nozzle part of it, and it seems to be almost the same sprayer as my cheaper Wagner sprayer that I first started spraying with. But I chose to use this sprayer this time because I want to keep testing it so I can help you guys with your paint sprayer questions more. I am so glad that I used it again. When I thinned out the paint, I started by just eyeballing around 20% water to paint ratio. And then I used the viscosity cup that came with my other Wagner paint sprayer to see how close it was to how that paint sprayer's owner's manual says to thin out the paint. The Flexio 3000 doesn't give much information on how much to thin out paint with a detailed nozzle. With the other Wagner, it usually needed to run out of the viscosity cup at around 40 seconds. It was still so much thicker than that with only 10% water. So I kept mixing in water until I got it to run out of the viscosity cup at around 43 seconds. Looking back, I think it ended up being around 40% water ratio. So, 6 ounces of water to 15 ounces of paint. Then I plugged in the sprayer, set the setting to 3, and tightened the dial behind the trigger all the way into the trigger. And then I turned it 20 strokes to loosen it. After I tested it on some cardboard, I wanted more paint to come out of it. So, I tightened it back up 5 strokes, making it a total of 15 strokes away from being completely tightened. And then I tested the sprayer again. I was super happy with those settings, so I moved on to spraying. This is the first time I have used Melange, but I have heard so much about it. So, I had to try it out, of course. Especially after I heard my girl Sarah at Sitting Pretty Home Decor 
rave about it. This is their all-in-one formula that has a satin sheen, but I've heard that it levels so well, even when brushing, and they have an amazing color palette to choose from. After the first coat, I let it dry for about an hour. And in between coats, I left the sprayer right there, not doing anything to it at all. But before I spray the next time, I used my nail to pick off the dried paint from the tip of the sprayer. For the second coat, I sprayed the drawers again, trying to get the sides of the dowels better. And I opened up the drawers so I could spray the sides and the tops of the drawers too. Then I let it dry for about two hours. When I came back, the dowels were super rough filling, so I sanded them smooth with 400 grit sandpaper, cleaned off the dust, and painted the third and last coat of paint. I was so impressed with how this paint sprayed and leveled. There is absolutely no texture or splatters of any kind in the finish. It looks so good. All right, so a few days later, we flipped over the dresser and built a new base for it. I cut a one inch by two inch by eight foot long oak board at a five degree angle to make the legs. And then I cut some more of that same board at the same angle for the front of the base. And then some more straight cuts for the two sides of the base. Then we put the base together and attached it to the bottom of the dresser with some Craig Jig pocket holes and screws. Maybe one day I'll share more about building a base for a dresser. Please let me know if that's something that you would like to see. All right, so before I share what this dresser looks like now, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps get our video out to more people, so thank you so much. So, here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. I can't wait for the chance to use this paint again. It looks so good. It's very durable, as is, without any top coat. I've tried scratching at it, and it's not going anywhere. I love the satin finish too, instead of the matte finish that most all-in-one paints seem to have. I think the slatted wood is so much fun. I'm not sure if I'll do it this exact same way again, and yeah, it's probably not the most profitable thing to be doing with my time, but these extra things bring me so much joy. And the wood base, well, I love that look. I wish that I could find some 2 inch by 2 inch oak wood for the legs. Everywhere is out of stock right now, I swear. But when I do, I'll probably be making another base for another piece of furniture. Anyway, what do you think of this makeover? <laughs>